Hello everyone, welcome to the video on anti-hypertensive agents. Let us understand about hypertension. Hypertension is increase in blood pressure is nothing but hypertension. Now blood pressure, what do you mean by blood pressure? The pressure exerted by the blood on the walls of arteries is known as blood pressure. Now blood pressure, the normal values are 120 by 80 mm of Hg. Right, 120 is systolic blood pressure. 80 is diastolic blood pressure. Anything which is greater than or equal to 140 by 90 is known as blood pressure. High blood pressure or hypertension. Now leaving this, if you need to understand certain things about blood pressure. Like blood pressure is given by, numerically it is given by cardiac output multiplied by peripheral vascular resistance. And cardiac output is given by stroke volume and heart rate. Let us see one by one. Now, what do you mean by stroke volume? Stroke means cardiac stroke. With each and every contraction, how much amount of blood comes out of the heart is known as stroke volume. The volume of blood coming out of the heart per each contraction. In a normal healthy individual, it will be around 70 ml. So, per contraction, per left ventricular contraction, 70 ml of blood gets into iota. Now, what is heart rate? The usual heart rate is 70 beats per minute. How many beats per minute? So when you multiply them, it comes around 5 liters or 4900 milliliters. Now this is what becomes cardiac output. Cardiac means heart. Output means the amount of blood which is coming out of the heart per minute is what is cardiac output is. Now what do you mean by this peripheral vascular resistance? This is the blood vessel and you have blood inside the blood vessel. So there is resistance offered by this vascular tissue and that is what is called as peripheral vascular resistance. It is determined by the contractile ability of blood vessel and the blood volume. If blood volume increases, what happens? Resistance increases. Or if blood vessel is not dilating properly, when there is a systole, what happens? Peripheral vascular resistance increases. So <clears throat> in order to simplify the things, blood pressure is given by these two things, cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance. So in order to control blood pressure, what we need to do? If you reduce peripheral vascular resistance, you will reduce BP or if you reduce cardiac output, we will reduce BP or you reduce stroke volume, you reduce cardiac output, you reduce heart rate, you reduce cardiac output and further you will reduce BP. So the major determinant of blood pressure are these things, cardiac output, peripheral vascular resistance, stroke volume, heart rate. Now, so the all anti-hypertensive agents will be targeting one of these components or more than one component. The, the goal is to reduce these things. So overall, to classify, so to classify uh, anti-hypertensives in a simple way, there are three major agents are there. First, diuretics. What do you mean by diuretics? The increased urinary output. So what happens? The volume in the blood reduces, it reduces blood pressure. Now, the next one, sympatholytics. What is the relevance of sympa sympathetics here? Sympathetic nervous system, noradrenaline will be acting on alpha and beta receptors. Alpha receptor cause vasoconstriction, increases hypertension. Beta receptor will be acting on heart, increases hypertension. You reduce the stimulation of noradrenaline or sympathetic system, you will be controlling blood pressure. What is the third major area? Vasodilators. If you dilate the blood vessel, what happens? Peripheral vascular resistance is reduced. BP is reduced. This is how we treat blood pressure. So these are the major agents which are used to treat hypertension. All the class classified drugs can be categorized in th these three classes. Let us see about them. See, this slide is from uh, William Foye. Understand this one. Diuretics, as we have seen, what happens with diuretics? Diuretics will reduce peripheral vascular reduce, uh, resistance. This automatically reduces blood pressure. Now, sympatholytics. Sympatholytics reduce heart rate, reduce stroke volume, and increase vasodilation. You know, alpha receptor blockers. So, all of them will reduce blood pressure. Now, remaining all agents can be classified as vasodilators. See, though we read these agents as vasodilators, calcium channel blockers, what do they do? They cause vasodilation. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, what do they do? Collectively put, they also cause vasodilation. So the entire group is classified as vasodilators. As I told you, three major groups, diuretics, sympatholytics, vasodilators. Let us see with the examples. Now look at them. 
Now, diuretics. You know, three major classes are there. See, the order is given according to clinical significance. The first and foremost class which is used to treat hypertension are thiazides. In the thiazides, hydrochlorothiazide, chlorothiazide, methylchlorothiazide belong to thiazide class. Related drugs like thiazide-like drugs are chlorothalidone, indapamide, zipamide and metalazone. See, all of them, their mechanism of action is they block sodium chloride symporter at distal convoluted tubule. So, the loss of sodium chloride is more, fluid loss will be there, urination output is increased, that is how they reduce fluid volume. Similarly, lube diuretics, what are the important drugs? Furosemide, bumetamide, tortosamide, ethakinic acid. All these things, the drugs which are ending with amides are sulfonamide derivatives. Ethakinic acid is the only exception, it doesn't have got sulfonamide. Now, all lube diuretics, how do they act? They block sodium, potassium, chloride, symporter at ascending loop of Henle. So, they cause severe diuresis and these drugs are very powerful agents which are used to treat pulmonary edema kind of problems. The last one, potassium sparing diuretics, as such they cannot be used as monotherapy but they are combined to spare potassium. Amylorate triamterin or sodium channel blockers at collecting duct, spironolactone is an aldosterone antagonist. Along with that, aplirenone is also used. So, these are all the major class of diuretics which are used to treat hypertension. Now, moving to the next one. Now, sympatholytics, again see the most prominent group is beta receptor antagonist, metoprolol, etanolol, betoxolol, bisoprolol, cartolol, esmolol. All of them are specific beta 1 blockers. They are cardioselective one, devoid of pulmonary side effects. After that, you will see non-specific nadolol, lambivolol, penbutalol, pindolol, propanol, timolol. All of them, they cause negative enotropy, negative chronotropy. Both of them will reduce cardiac output and reduce blood pressure. Now, what is the next group? Alpha-1 receptor antagonists like prejosin, terajosin, doxajosin, phenoxybenzamine, and phentolamine. The first three are alpha-1 selective, whereas the next one is alpha non-selective. These drugs are widely used to treat adrenal tumors like pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma. Now, alpha receptor blockers, the major adverse effect is profuse vasodilation and orthostatic hypotension. Now, the next one is alpha and beta receptor antagonists like labetalol, carvedilol, these are also used to treat hypertension. Now, the remaining classes, we read it as a class, but the wide use is not there, but centrally acting adrenergic uh, agents are used like methyl dopa, clonidine. These two drugs, see, the logic is on the same neuron from which noradrenaline is biosynthesized, you have receptors are there. They are called as autoreceptors alpha 2 or central receptors. When the released noradrenaline, when it acts on the receptor, it inhibits noradrenaline biosynthesis. This is called as negative feedback. This is how these drugs will act. Now the last class, uh, the less known, uh, the less known clinically used drugs are guanadryl reserpine. Reserpine reduces vesicular accumulation of noradrenaline. So when nerve is stimulated from the uh, Vesicle noradrenaline will not be released, rather reserpine is released, but it causes long-term depression. So these are all sympatholytics. The next one, calcium channel blockers like virapamil, deltiasm. These two are cardioselective. The remaining drugs are called as dihydropyridines, which are vasoselective. That means they are selective towards blood vessels, whereas the remaining drugs are selective towards heart. Now, the next one belongs to renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. Like ACE inhibitors, all the prills, all of them are ACE enzyme inhibitors. But the prominent problem is they cause prominent cough. To avoid that cough side effect, angiotensin receptor 2 blockers are used like sartans, losartan, candesartan, erbisartan, valsartan, all of them. Direct renin inhibitor is aliskiran. In my previous videos, I have explained about all these classes. So, in this video, I will briefly explain about this class, vasodilators, arterial and arterial and venous viso, uh, vasodilators. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, a clinical correlation. See, the major goal of hypertension is to reduce sympathetic tone. That is why we use sympatholytics and reduce blood volume. What is that? Diuretics. See, these are sympatholytics. This class is diuretics. Relax vascular smooth muscle means vasodilators. These are all the three major classes and this is what is the goal is. Now, <coughs> the current recommendation is to use thiazide diuretics, ACE inhibitors, 
or calcium channel blockers. Now these drugs are considered equally effective. So these are all the three major classes which are used to treat hypertension. Thiazide diuretics, ACE inhibitors or calcium channel blockers. Now vasodilators. See there are reagents which are acting through nitric oxide like hydralazine. Hydralazine increases the duration of action of nitric oxide. It reduces total peripheral resistance, so it can be used to treat moderate or severe hy hypertension. Now the side effects are systemic lupus erythematous like syndrome, edema and reflex tachycardia. I have discussed this in my previous videos. These are the major adverse effects of most of the anti-hypertensive drugs. Now, sodium nitroprusside. Now, uh, understand this one. See, hydralazine is specifically arteriolar dilator. It will not act on veins. But nitroprusside will be acting, dilating both arterial and veins and it acts by releasing nitric oxide. It is used in hypertensive emergencies because both the blood vessels will get dilated, causes profuse hypotension. Now, side effect, a kind of cyanide toxicity. Now, the next class, uh, 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 blood vessel dilators, potassium channel openness like minoxidil diazoxide. Both of them, they cause potassium channel open, causes hyperpolarization and results in arterioral, again arterioral vasodilation. So, they are used to treat insulinoma, severe hypertension and baldness. See, insulinoma, the reason why it is used is it reduces insulin release because it is a potassium channel opener. Hyperpolarization reduces insulin release. One of its side effects is hypertrichosis causing excessive hair because of that it is used to treat baldness minoxidil whereas diazoxide <coughs> excuse me as we have seen it is used to treat hyperglycemia edema reflex cardia reflex tachycardia common adverse effects now this is important one understand this one see vasodilators only arterial vasodilators are calcium channel blockers hydralazine and potassium channel openers whereas venodilators are only nitrates see the difference these are agents effective against arteries, these are against veins. Now both the rest means A's inhibitors, ARBs, all of them comes under the remaining. They, they affect both arteriolar, venular and sodium nitroprusside. So this is an important list. Now some of the important things, see orthostatic hypotension results from venular dilation not with arteriolar. So it is a prominent adverse effect with alpha 1 blockade. Now in hypertensive emergencies, See, hypertensive energy is the one which may cause organ damage. The most common drugs are nitroprusside, labitalol and phenoldapam. Remember this, nitroprusside, it affects arteries and veins, hence it can be used. Labitalol, alpha and beta blocker. Now, see, if in diabetic women, pre-existing hypertension can be treated by methyl dopa or labitalol, or the newly onset hypertension is treated with labitalol or hydralazine. So this is important in pregnant women, mostly the preferred one is methyl dopa. So this is about a brief short course on antihypertensive drugs. Thank you for watching this video.